So there are a ton of products out there designed to keep our skin looking beautiful and for anti-aging. But have you ever wondered, does this product really work or am I wasting my money? So one of my all time favorite products is vitamin C. It keeps my skin glowing. And I am gonna tell you today why this is scientifically proven to work and some things to look out for when you're buying your vitamin C product. Skin is the largest organ in our body. Therefore, it is very metabolically active. One thing that's essential to keep our skin healthy is vitamin C. And vitamin C is very anti-aging for our skin. So I'm gonna tell you three ways that vitamin C affects our skin. So the first thing it does is it acts as an antioxidant. What does this mean? So when the sun damages our cells, it produces free radicals. And something that vitamin C does is it neutralizes these free radicals and keeps our cells healthy. So it really doesn't block our skin from UVA and UVB rays, but it repairs the damage induced by the sun. So there's actually data to prove that this is true. Um, one thing that skin cells do in response to damage from the sun is they increase transport proteins on keratinocytes or skin cells for the vitamin C to come in. So when the skin is damaged by the sun, the skin is basically saying, hey, I need more vitamin C to repair this damage. And it increases those transport proteins itself. So in addition to the antioxidant function, um, vitamin C is also very important for collagen production. What is collagen? Collagen is a protein that allows our skin to have integrity and be nice and firm and plump. So you know how little kids have that beautiful, nice, plump appearance of their face? Well, they have an abundance of collagen. And as we get older, unfortunately, our collagen production is decreased. So especially after the age of 35, but even after the age of 20, our collagen production is decreased every year by 1%. So that's why vitamin C is so important. So what does vitamin C do for collagen? Number one, vitamin C helps cross-link the collagen fibers that maintains the extracellular stability. Number two, it helps make fibroblasts. Well, what are fibroblasts? Fibroblasts are cells that make collagen. And as we get older, fibroblasts actually are decreased. So that's why it's very important to maintain your vitamin C. So yet another thing that vitamin C does is that it has a lightening and brightening effect. So for example, with people with acne who have these inflammatory lesions that darken, and sometimes take a while to go away or sometimes never goes away. It helps with this tremendously. Um, also any dark spots like hyperpigmentation, like with melasma, etc. cetera. Um, what vitamin C actually does is it helps to suppress melanocytes or cells that produce pigment in your skin. So it controls this and altogether when these dark spots are suppressed, this also produces sort of an anti-aging effect for you. Vitamin C is a normal constituent found in the skin, both in the epidermal and dermal layers. As we get older, the vitamin C is actually reduced. There are other things that decrease the vitamin C, like UV radiation, um, pollutants like the ozone and cigarette smoke. Also, as we get older, there's more oxidative damage to our skin. So then you ask, well, is there any way I can add vitamin C back to my skin? Well, there are two ways that do this, um, through oral route or topical route. And first, I'm gonna talk to you about the oral route, either through our diet or through supplementation. So there are human studies to indicate that an increased intake of vitamin C does correlate with a better skin appearance and decrease of wrinkling. There are also studies that say that an increase of vitamin C does reduce skin dryness or does decrease transepidermal water loss. So um, there are a lot of human studies which prove that 
uh, getting more vitamin C by mouth is important for your skin. So one interesting fact is that humans do not make their own vitamin C. So most mammals make their own vitamin C. Um, the only ones that don't are humans, monkeys, and guinea pigs. So we actually have a defect um, on the enzyme that's required to make vitamin C. So that's why it's so important to get it from your diet or through supplementation. So there's actually a controversy between MDs on whether you should get the whole vitamin C complex or just ascorbic acid. And I'm sure you've heard these two terms before, um, vitamin C and ascorbic acid. So let me explain to you briefly what they are. So vitamin C complex is a complex and inside it has tyrosinase, bioflavonoids, organic copper, and other things. And it's surrounded by ascorbic acid. And of course, ascorbic acid is just ascorbic acid. So while I feel like it's beneficial to get the whole complex from fruits and vegetables, I also think it's very beneficial to get ascorbic acid. And there is scientific proof for this, but for time purposes, I will not describe why, but believe me, it is just as beneficial to get ascorbic acid. So how much vitamin C or ascorbic acid do you need? So I'm going to tell you the recommended daily allowance, but I would personally double it because as you remember through studies, the higher the intake of vitamin C, the better off your skin is. So uh, for women, they say the daily allowance should be 75 milligrams for men, 90 milligrams. Pregnant women should get 85 milligrams and smokers should add 35 milligrams. I hope you're not smoking, but if you do add vitamin C. Um, so this is the recommended da daily allowance. And again, I would double it. So I'm going to give you my top six foods that contain vitamin C. Um, number one, a kiwi. One kiwi has 72 milligrams of vitamin C. Strawberries, a cup of strawberries has 97 milligrams of vitamin C. An orange, a medium citrus fruit has 70 milligrams of vitamin C. A papaya, I really don't eat papaya, but I think I should. One large one has 475 milligrams of vitamin C. Dark green leafy vegetables like kale, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli. So one stock of broccoli has 134 milligrams of vitamin C. And the last one, which is a favorite of mine, is a red bell pepper. And one red bell pepper has 190 milligrams of vitamin C. So I think that's outstanding. So now I'm going to talk to you about the topical form of vitamin C. And there are a lot of people out there that say that topical vitamin C does not work for your skin. And I think it does work for your skin. So in human studies, we measure um, skin health by the depth of the skin and the number of wrinkles. And it has been shown in human studies that after 12 weeks of use of vitamin C on our skin, decreases the wrinkles, um, improves the roughness of the skin, increases the collagen, and decreases the damage in our skin. So this proves to you that it does work. So let me talk to you about a few things to consider when you're buying a vitamin C product. The first thing I'll talk about is the fact that vitamin C is a hydrophilic compound. And what does that mean? That means that it likes water. And what is our skin composed of? Our skin is composed of lipids. So it's hard for vitamin C to get into the lipids and travel to the dermis. So one thing that helps it get down into the dermis is its pH. So um, vitamin C's that are prepared in a pH of four or less are more likely to get in the dermal layers of your skin. So another property of vitamin C is that it degrades quickly to light and air. So a few things you wanna remember about the packaging is it should be very opaque, so it doesn't let any light in, and also it should be airtight. Um, when you see the serum or cream, it should be pretty yellow to orange. Um, if it turns brown, that means that it's been oxidized. So an example um, that is similar to this is 
a peach. If you cut a peach and leave it out on your counter, initially it's a yellow to orange color, but if you leave it out too long, it turns brown and that's um, called oxidation. So the same thing can happen pretty easily to a vitamin C serum. So what percentage is best when you're using ascorbic acid as a topical? Well, um, we have to be careful because ascorbic acid is very acidic. So it has been shown that a range of 10 to 20% is the best range and the most effective for your skin. Any higher than this and it's not going to have any added benefit and also can be irritating or damage your skin. One product I came across um, when looking for vitamin C products was a powder made by The Ordinary. And what you're supposed to do is take a powder and mix it with a liquid and then apply it to your skin. Well, my problem with this is that I feel like you wouldn't know exactly what percentage you're putting on your skin and that could be irritating or damaging. And lastly, topical applications of both vitamin C and vitamin E placed on the skin were found to be more effective than just vitamin C alone. So this was shown through human studies. So I would recommend um, when you do find a serum or a lotion that you like that it contains both vitamin C and vitamin E. So in conclusion, I hope this helps you. I hope that you realize that taking vitamin C by mouth and also using it on your skin can really help with anti-aging, give you a brightening, lightening effect and just kind of give you a glow. I personally use it myself. I enjoy using it. Um, I'll probably make another video in which um, I describe some products and go through if I like them or not. So again, I hope you like this. Give me a like, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell for more future videos, and I hope you're having a wonderful week. See you soon.